Welcome to Highline BI 348 class video number 58. Hey, if you want to download this Excel file, BI 348 chapter 8 and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video we're talking linear programming to optimize an objective function. And we're going to use Excel Solver. Now in last video we used linear algebra and paper and the graphical method to solve this problem. Now here's our problem. Computer company sells laptop 1 and laptop 2. We have a price of 295 and 450 respectively and a cost of goods sold of 250 and 400 respectively. And we would like to maximize contribution margin given some constraints. Now the first constraint is the max monthly demand for laptop 1 is 200 units. The min monthly demand for laptop 2 is 100. That means we already signed a contract. We have to sell 100. And our total cost of goods sold cannot exceed 700,000. Now our goal is what number of units produced and sold will maximize contribution margin. And contribution margin is just sales minus cost of goods sold. Whatever that amount is can contribute to other expenses and profit. Now we're going to have to, just like we did last video, list our goal, our variables, including our decision variables, list our objective function and the constraints. Now, I've already set this up a little bit. So I'm going to come here and type product laptop 1. That'll be product 1 and then laptop 2. Now, our price for laptop 1, 295. Cost of goods sold is 250. Our price for laptop 2 is 450 and the cost of goods sold is 400. Now we can calculate our contribution margin. I highlight both cells and in the active cell I say Hey, whatever the price is, minus the cost of goods sold, and control enter. Now, our decision variable is going to be defined as number of units produced and sold. I'm just going to put x to represent number of units sold for laptop 1 and y for number of units sold for laptop 2. And now I'm going to put our dummy data in 1 and 1. That's the number of units. Now, it is the Excel solver feature, which will find the optimal solution for this decision variable that will maximize the contribution margin. Now, here's some of the formula inputs in our decision variable. We have some more formula inputs. The constraint, so max monthly demand for laptop 1, that's going to be 200. The min monthly demand for laptop 2 will be 100. The max cost of goods sold for this project is going to be 70,000. All right, so that's most of our formula inputs. Now I'm going to scroll down. And now we want to list our goal or our objective. Calculate the number of units for laptop 1 and laptop 2. That'll be that decision variable, which will maximize contribution margin. Now if we're going to maximize contribution margin, we need an objective function. Written out, total contribution margin equals 45 bucks times x. That just means there's the contribution margin times the number of units plus contribution margin for laptop 2 times the number of units. Now, that's math, right? And we did that last video. But we need an Excel formula, which we can point to using Solver and tell Solver maximize this formula. So here it is. We take these two cells times these two cells. That sounds like the perfect job for some product function. Now, array 1, I'm going to select the two contribution margins. Those are also called the coefficients, the coefficients of our decision variables. Comma, array 2, I'm going to take our decision variables. Now, here we only have two, right? But later, we'll have many. And so the sum product will come in quite handy. And Enter. Our goal is to maximize. Now, when we get to our data solver dialog box, it's going to be convenient to have the formula and the goal, or down here to have our formulas for our constraint, the operator, meaning comparative operator, and then the actual constraint. It's going to be convenient to have them listed next to each other like this, because it'll help us enter 
all of the correct numbers into the dialog box. And this is a relatively small problem. Later, we'll have some much bigger problems. So following a format like this will be helpful. Now, our math constraints. We wrote all of these out last video on paper and then plotted them on an XY chart. But here, we still need to have all of the formulas, but they're going to be Excel formulas. Now, for the non-negativity constraint, that just means our decision variables have to be greater than or equal to 0. x greater than or equal to 0, y greater than or equal to 0. In earlier versions of Solver, we had to actually put these formulas explicitly into the dialog box, but now they just have a checkbox where we check it, and it will make sure that our decision variables are not negative. Now we got to think about our constraint. This is the actual number of units for x have to be less than or equal to 200. That means a maximum amount. Well, we're going to need a formula here. Remember our function, as we talked about last video, there's the left-hand side for the actual functions and the right-hand side for our constraints. So the function, well, it's just x, right? So I say equals, there's my x, tab. Now, if a comparative operator is less than or equal to, I'm going to put a lead apostrophe, less than or equal to, and tab. So that lead apostrophe, sometimes when you put comparative operators into cells, Excel thinks it's a formula. Now, this is not necessary to do. I do this. So visually on the spreadsheet, we can see it. And when we enter it into the dialog box, we don't make any mistakes. Now, the constraint, I'm going to go up and point that cell to my formula input 200 and enter. We'll talk about what slack is later. All right, total units for y. Well, I'm simply going to get, hey, there's my y decision variable, tab. And notice y greater than or equal to 100. That's the min. So this comparative operator will be greater than or equal to. And our constraint, our right-hand side number, is going to be 100. Now, there's our formula for total cost of goods sold. You know, we're looking at it in an algebra form. Though. Maybe it looks confusing, but we know this is easy. We simply go, hey, sum product. I'm going to take the actual cost of goods sold, 250 and 400. That's array 1, comma, array 2. That's going to be our decision variables. Close parentheses. And I must have entered something incorrect. F2. And I did. Look at that. I had a, a minus there. So I get rid of that Control Enter. Now, this is less than or equal to because that is a maximum amount. So lead apostrophe less than or equal to tab. And our constraint, our right-hand side number, 70,000. Now we're ready to go. We have an objective function, which is now an Excel formula, which we can maximize. Our formulas for our constraints and our right-hand side numbers. Now I'm going to click in the cell, go up to Data, over to Analysis. Now you have to add this in. And if you don't have it in, File, Options, Add-ins. Down here we say Go. And there it is right there, Escape. All right, so I'm going to go up to Solver. All right, so here we go. Here's the set objective. That dialog box with the collapse button means we click on the cell with the Excel formula we want to maximize. We can choose max, min, or set to a particular value. By changing variable cells, this is the decision variable. We have two of them. Now Excel knows what two numbers to change in order to maximize. It will report back the number of units we should produce and sell for each. Now we come down here, make unconstrained variables non-negative. That's that checkbox that doesn't require that we put those formulas in explicitly. Select solving method. Now this usually comes up GRG nonlinear. You want to make sure and set it to simplex LP. We talked about that last video. This is the method that searches the vertices or extreme points of a feasible region and reports back only the xy coordinates for the max or optimal value. Now we need to click Add to start adding our constraints. And here's we're setting it up so nice and neat is easy. The cell reference means the actual formula. So there it is. There's our x variable, and we've already 
listed it so we know that's the correct one. And our constraint, that's the right-hand side. Now we click Add. Cell reference, that's the actual function. The comparative operator, I have to click the drop down and say greater than or equal to. So we got that. And then the right-hand side constraint, that's the 100. Add. Cell reference, that is our function. We need to make sure we have the right comparative operator. We do. And the constraint is 70,000. Now, I could click OK here, but I always make this mistake. I click Add. Now if you click OK, then you get an error, right? Because it's empty. So I click OK. So if you have entered them all and you're done, you click Cancel. It doesn't cancel the actual constraints. They're already in there. And so there it is, the objective function. We're going to max the decision variables. There's our constraints. There's the non-negativity constraint, linear programming. Now I'm going to click Solve. Solver has found a solution. All constraints and optimality conditions are satisfied. Keep solver solution. I'm going to click on two reports, answer and sensitivity. These will be inserted as new sheets. Now when I click OK, there is my optimal solution. 120 for laptop 1, 100 for laptop 2. That will maximize our profits at 10400 bucks. Now I want to go look at Answer Report. It lists the objective cell, the actual cell. And this is really clever, Total Contribution Margin Formula. I want to go look at how Solver actually created that label. We go back over here. And there's C27. It actually took the text from the left and above and concatenated those to create a label. Later, when we look at the constraints, it will do the same thing for this cell. It'll take the text to the left, total units for x, and concatenate it with the label up here, formula. So we're going to go back over to answer. And sure enough, total contribution margin formula. If you look down here for that constraint, total units for x formula. So this name is very convenient. It concatenates the left and right. So it's usually a good practice to have smart text to the left and to the right. So there's the cell. There's the name. There's the original value. There's the final optimized value. Down here under variable cells, the cell, the name, the original value, the final value, and what type of variable it is. We didn't change it to integer, so it's telling us it's a continuous variable. Later, we'll see how to change it to integer and to binary. Now down here under constraints, there's the cell. There's the name. The cell value, that's the actual final value that they came out to be, formula. And status and slack. Now status, when it says binding, it means we actually hit the constraint. If this is the cell value, well, we know the constraint was 70,000, so we hit it. We were binding, we hit the constraint, and there's no slack. There's no wiggle room. Here, that demand for y, well, we hit. That's the actual y value at the end in the optimal solution. That's exactly equal to the constraint, so it's binding with zero slack. The 120, that is exactly 80 below the max demand of 200, so it is not binding. If we actually go look at a slide over in our PowerPoints, we actually plotted this by hand last video. What those constraints mean is that is the intersection of two lines on the outside of the feasible region right there. It found at one of the extreme points an optimal value. That is x equal 120 and y equal 100. Notice because the point is right on these lines, we hit the constraints. We're binding. But notice we're also exactly 80 away from that constraint. Back over to Excel. Now we want to go over to the sensitivity report. And we're going to look at the constraints first. There's the cell. There's the name. The final value, you can see. We hit these two constraints, but not this one. Now, shadow price. Shadow price tells you if you were to increase the right-hand side of that constraint by 1, how much would the objective function change? Well, here, we're 80 away. So if we increase this by 1, it doesn't change at all the objective function value. But let's think about this one. We hit 
the constraint here. The constraint is 100. If I increase it by 1 to 101, that means the value of the objective function will go down by 22. For this third constraint right here, we hit the constraint, right? Here's 70,000. If I increase it by 1, which means I make it bigger by 1, 70,001, the objective function will go up 0.18. Now, if we're changing this, it might be helpful from the allowable increase and decrease column to know what the range is for this number right here. That means we can increase it by 75 and decrease it by 50, and the shadow price will still be valid. Now up here to our variable cells, the cell, the name, the final value. Reduced cost means if we increase the non-negativity, for example, from 0 to 1, how much will the objective function change by? In this case, 0 for both of them. This is the objective function coefficient, that 45 and 50. And this is the range for how much we can change these and still have the optimal solution. Now I want to go back over to Manufacturing Mix. So in this video, we saw how to use Excel Solver to get an optimal solution, in our case, maximize contribution margins given a set of constraints. Now when we come back in our next video, we'll talk about special cases that we might get when we run Solver. All right, we'll see you next video.